All right, welcome back to this video on balancing chemical equations. Now before we get started, I am assuming that you have some knowledge of, of chemical equations. You should know the difference between an atom and an element. You should know the difference between an atom and a molecule and the difference between an element and a compound. If you're not real comfortable with those things, go ahead and go back and study the previous videos. You should also know how to write simple equations that describe a compound. We have a subscript that tells us how many atoms of each element there are in the compound. And then we also have what we call the coefficient, the number in front that tells us how many molecules of that compound we're talking about. So if you know those things, you're in good shape. If not, go back and study them. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, what does it mean to balance a chemical equation? Well, before we can answer that, you need to understand what a chemical equation is. Here's an example. And over here on this side of the arrow, we have the either the atoms or the molecules that we're placing together and we call those the reactants. We're going to place these together. The arrow here indicates there's going to be some kind of reaction and the way we read that arrow is yield. Y -E, I'm sorry, Y-I-E-L-D, yield. Okay, so when we put H2 and O2 together and they chemically react, they're going to yield the product, which in this case is H2O. So you should notice that each one of these is a molecule. And let's see if we can model those right now. So H2. Here's a molecule of H2. Two atoms of hydrogen that are chemically bound together. That means we cannot take those apart easily. So we're just going to always work at those as a single molecule. We're going to combine that with a molecule of oxygen, O2. And what we're going to get is water. We know that happens. We know that if we mix hydrogen and oxygen together, add a little bit of energy, it's going to create water. But this is what is this what it would look like in real life is what we're asking ourselves. Well, let's go back. Remember when we talked about something called conservation of mass? We said that we cannot create atoms or we can't destroy them, that all the matter in the entire universe is fixed. We've got only got so much. We can't create more. We can't destroy it. All we can do is rearrange these atoms and move them around to create different uh, compounds and whatnot. So if we look at this and think logically about it, if we take two hydrogen and mix it with two oxygen, could we possibly get one oxygen and two hydrogen? The answer would be no, because we destroyed an atom of oxygen, and that's not allowed. That oxygen has to be somewhere. All right, so we're going to talk about how we figure out how this really works. And the way we do that is we look at this and we say if we started with two oxygens, we have to have two on the output. And the only way I can get that is if I add another molecule of water. Now notice that I didn't just go in here and change this subscript. That's a no-no. We can never do that. We can never change a subscript because if we did, we would be changing this entire compound. So all we can do is add another. We've got two molecules of water now, but it's still water. All right, let's see if it's balanced now. We've got two oxygen, two oxygen. We've got four hydrogen on this side and only two on this side. Two and four. That's not balanced. So what do we got to do to balance it? We've got to add another hydrogen molecule to this side. So let's do that. There we go. Now we've got um, hydrogen molecule on that side. So we've got four hydrogens and one, two, three, four hydrogens, two oxygen and two oxygen. So now it's balanced. So the way we should have really written this equation to show how it works is we should have said we're going to start out with two molecules of H2. We're going to put that together with one molecule of O2. They are going to take have a chemical reaction and they are going to yield or produce two molecules of H2O. Now that is definitely balanced. 
look at the relationship between the equation and the model. All right, let's try another one. Going to go a little faster here. We've got CH4. I'm going to model it like this. Now, notice that these are not the way these molecules would necessarily look when I, if I could look at them under a microscope. But they work really good for our purposes here. All right, so you got CH4, one carbon, four hydrogen. We're going to put that together with an O2 molecule. It's going to react and it's going to yield. CO2, which you probably know is carbon dioxide gas, so this would probably cause bubbling, and H2O. Now the question is, is this balanced? Well, let's see. One carbon, one carbon. That's good. Four hydrogens, only two. So I need to add something to this side. I need to add another molecule of water. So I've got one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogen, four hydrogen, two oxygen, and four oxygen. That's not good, right? It's not balanced. All of a sudden we come up with two extra oxygen atoms. That can't happen. So where did they come from? Well, we actually started with two molecules of oxygen. So now we have one, one, four hydrogen, four hydrogen and four oxygen and four oxygen. All right, very good. Hopefully this is starting to make a little sense to you. Let's try one more. Here we have an iron atom. Notice it's not a compound now. It's an atom. So we'll represent that with one green one. This is a molecule of O2. This is a compound. So we've got two oxygen atoms. They react and they're going to yield Fe2O3. What's going on here is we got iron and we got oxygen. They're going to react and we're going to get rust. Now, once again, this is not the way a rust molecule would look, but for our purposes, it works pretty good. All right, let's see if we can balance this. Let's just start out with the iron. We've got one atom on this side. We've got two on this side. So we need to add one. Two iron. 2 iron, 2 oxygen, 3 oxygen. That's not cool. So we got to come over to this side. And we're going to have to add another oxygen molecule. So now we've got 4 oxygen atoms. Over here we've only got 3. So now we got to add one to this side. So now we've got 4 oxygen atoms, 6 oxygen atoms. All right, I got to go back and add two more. So now I got six oxygen, six oxygen, two iron, four iron. So we're still not balanced. We got to go back over here and fix the irons again. So we're going to add two more atoms of iron. Now I've got four iron, four iron, six oxygen, and six oxygen. So it is now balanced. And the way we should write that is four Fe's plus three O2's yields two molecules of rust. Pretty cool, huh? All right, now, can we do this without using the models? Well, sure we can, because we can count atoms up here, four atoms, three molecules, two molecules, just like we did with the models. So let's try one of those. All right, this one looks kind of strange, because we've never used TI before, but that's just another element. So let's start looking at it. We've got TI, we've got TI. We've got CL4, and we've got a single CL. So if we got four over here, we need to get four over here. And the only way we can do that is to add three more molecules. So that's going to make a total of four. So let's rewrite that. T I C L four plus H two O yields T I 
O2 plus four molecules of HCl. Go back and check again. TI, TI. Four CLs, four CLs. Looking good. Two H's, whoops, four H's. So what do we have to do over here? We have to add another molecule of H2O or water. So that will make that a two. Let's rewrite it. TiCl4 plus two H2Os yields, whoops, I forgot the yield sign up here. Sorry about that. Okay, down here, yields TiO2 plus four HCl. All right, we're going to check it one more time. TI, TI, CL4, 4, CL, that matches. 2 times 2 is 4 H's. Over here I've got 4 H's, so that's good now. And I've also got 2 times 1 O's, or 2 O's. And over here I've got two oxygens as well. So this is now balanced. This is the way it would really work. So our legitimate equation or our good equation is TiCl4 plus two molecules of water will yield TiO2 plus four HCl. And there you have it. I hope you found this video interesting and that you learned a little bit. If you have questions, feel free to go back and rewind it and play it again and again and again until it makes sense to you. You may want to pause it and try doing this one before I work through it just to see if you can do it. And after you get in class and you work a few of these, uh, you're going to be balancing equations just like a pro. Well, maybe like a high school chemistry student anyway. So. Till next time, keep learning, my friends. Take care.